Thank you for the honor. It's really humbling. In fact, I think I'm more terrified than anything else right now to be here with all of you. I normally teach to classes about the size of 20. There's a few more people out here than that. But it really is an honor to be here with Dean Minow, faculty, staff, friends, parents, and the graduating class. I'm deeply moved to receive this teaching award from you, the graduating class. And what has struck me, what continues to strike me, is how strange it feels to be singled out. Perhaps this is because I have always been part of a team in my human rights work. And it has never been more perfectly realized than here with the students and clinicians at our human rights clinic. In reflecting on today, and I'm a clinician, so you better believe reflection is part of what I do, I thought back, I wondered, how was I crazy enough to start an NGO during my last year of law school, which then took me to Thailand for 10 years? And somehow I ended up here at Harvard teaching. And the answer is really clear to me now. There have always been others with me all along the way. I've never done it alone, never. And really, all of us together are essential to success, whether in practice or in teaching. This is the way the law works in my experience. This is the way struggles for justice work. Okay, I give you that occasionally there's an Albert Einstein of law in our midst. There are probably a few of them in our faculty. But that's not the norm. What is the norm is that the law practice is a cooperative effort, especially when you're working for justice. I look back 20 years ago next week, I went to Thailand for the first time. It was my second summer of law school, and it was a defining summer. A law school classmate and I, along with an advocate from Burma, decided to start a human rights organization that we called Earth Rights. My first day in Thailand, I also met Ang, the woman that would become my wife, my partner. So a pretty big summer. And these are the relationships that have shaped my life both in a professional sense and also in the personal sense. But in my career as in your, yours, the law is a vital piece of the puzzle. You need the talent to dissect legal arguments, to research, to write, to persuade others. Working with you in our clinical teams, I've seen it firsthand. You have these talents. You have these skills. Yes, these talents and skills will no doubt continue to evolve. These are the tools of your craft, and they are your foundation. But recently, in a conversation with my young daughters, Amaya and Reina, who are both here today, they reminded me that the tools of your craft are only part of the story. My kids have taught me to slow down and to appreciate the small moments in life. And they are absolutely right. As I look back at my 10 years at Harvard, it's not the legal arguments that I remember most, but the moments along the way where our teams have literally hummed. I remember being on clinical missions in South Africa, in Bolivia, in Burma, and having breakthroughs on legal theories as we thrashed out how to link abuses with the perpetrators. I remember this year wrestling with the wording of a single sentence with the clinical team over and over again until we got it absolutely right and then seeing the legal argument end up in a judge's decision. 
I remember the time another team camped out all night in the freezing cold, colder than today, on the steps of the Supreme Court so they could hear oral argument on the case that we were working on. I remember the moment one of those students, now an alum, put her name as counsel on a brief for the very first time, joined by students who put their names on a brief for the first time as well. I remember another colleague signing her first amicus brief and the joy of sharing that moment with her. I remember seeing an alum leading a clinical team and then launching her own new nonprofit last year. Each moment represents a culmination of collective effort. I don't always remember the specifics of an argument or the specific brief that we were working on, but I do remember these moments. They are what give meaning, what give texture to the work. I've seen the good the law can do, but also the evil it can bring. How the law can be used to oppress in places like Burma, in South Africa, and elsewhere. I've also seen how it can advance justice. On occasion, we do get a win, but most of the time, it's much less clear. Perhaps this is why those of us who work for justice do it with others, because the solidarity of the struggle is part of how we measure success. Look, the work we do is hard. Everybody knows that. The problems we face today, like generations before us, are new and challenging. Whether it's preparing for a Supreme Court hearing or figuring out a transition in a post-war conflict or determining ways to address climate change or poverty in the coming decades, the problems are too large, too complex for one person. This is why the practice of social justice is not done alone. One only needs to spend an evening at the law school's annual dinner celebrating public service, or one day in a clinic during a push on a case filing to know that's true. A recent exchange with a colleague during an oral argument brought it all home for me. We were sitting at counsel's table with another colleague who was, we were sitting at the table and another colleague was standing at the podium and arguing. We quietly jotted a few notes and at one point I passed her, passed one to her saying, I'm so glad you came up with that argument. Then another question from the judge, and there it was. Work that the clinical team had done that very morning. The research and drafting of a crafted answer to an anticipated question. From the students' computers to the outline of counsel and into the courtroom in a matter of hours. I passed my colleague another note saying how great the students were. And then she jotted a few simple words on a post-it. It read, quote, added all together were a good lawyer. I keep that note in my wallet. Two weeks later, we had a decision in our favor based on the arguments we made together that day. We indeed added all together, had been one good lawyer. I love this job. It's the best job in the world. What I love is that the teaching is so wrapped up with the practice and the learning that I do with you. I'm confident you, this year's graduating class, are as committed 
as any class before you to the causes you care about. And I know that you have the talent, the insights, the intellect to make a profound contribution. May you have as many memorable moments in the years ahead as I've had. More, I hope. Memories and moments, ones that come from a love of luring, a love of service, a love of teaching and learning, and a love of working and being with others. Congratulations to all of you. Celebrate today, celebrate tomorrow, and thank you.